Okay. You're on, Shimangla. Yeah. One pioneer in advocating for mental exercise is the Israeli neuroscientist Shlomo Beznitz, who argues that the brain needs a lot of stimulation in order to stay in shape. As he stated in an interview with Edward Punset for the Spanish television program Reads, there is a tension between what is good for someone and what they want to do. This is because people, especially older people, like to do things as they've always done them. The problem is that when the brain develops ingrained habits, it doesn't need to think anymore. Things get done quickly and efficiently on automatic pilot, often in a very advantageous way. This creates a tendency to stick to routines and the only way of breaking these is to confront the brain with new information. Okay, so we all get into habits. Just look at the way that you wipe yourself after, after a shower or you brush your teeth. You'll find you'll do it the exact same way that you do it every day. So it becomes autopilot. You don't even think of doing it. You just do it. The moment you have to think of doing it, it breaks the circuit. Okay. Now, if this becomes everything in your life becomes routine and there is nothing new, there's no new stimulus coming into your life, it will always create a problem because after some time your brain will become dull. It will become an autopilot. So we keep needing to feed new stuff into the brain. Presented with new information, the brain creates new connections and is revitalized. This is why it is so important to expose yourself to change. Even if stepping outside your comfort zone means feeling a bit of anxiety. So again, how, how is something new created? By doing something new. Yesterday I told you all, I ask a, we ask a question in all our workshops that we conduct. When was the last time you did something new? Now, of course, all of you are reading a new book, right? Now, let's say apart from this, what new have you done in this lockdown period? Have you grown in any way? What new skill have you learned? Okay, so what is the new thing that you've done? You should write it down. What are the new things that you have done in this lockdown period? What are the new things that you have learned? What have you grown? How have you grown? That becomes very, very important. The effects of mental training have been scientifically demonstrated. According to Collins Hemingway, the Shlomo Bresnitz in their book, Maximum Brain Power, Challenging the Brain for Health and Wisdom, mental training is beneficial on many levels. You begin exercising your brain by doing a certain task for the first time, he writes. And at first, it seems very difficult. But as you learn how to do it, the training is already working. So again, any time you attempt to do something for the first time, because it is unknown territory, at times it is difficult. But as you keep doing it, it becomes more and more familiar, more and more familiar. And then you, it becomes again automatic. So now you again have to shift into something new. That is a skill set you already have. Now you go into another skill set. So you have to keep doing new stuff. The second time you realize that it's easier, not harder to do, because you're getting better at it. This has a fantastic effect on a person's mood. In and of itself, it is a transformation that affects not only the results obtained, but also his or her self-image. So the more skilled you become, the more confident you become, the more, uh, 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 I mean, what, what do you say? More competent Adept. you become. This description of a mental workout might sound a bit formal, but simply interacting with others, playing a game, for example, offers new stimuli and helps prevent the depression that can come with solitude. Now, this is extremely important. Previously, the family used to get together to play indoor board games. Okay. Now, what do you find? Most of the kids are on their phone. They are isolated with their phone. There is no community feeling. Everything is done on the phone. I've seen an example where there are eight kids in one room. All of them are on their phone and they're talking to each other on the phone rather than talking with each other. 
so the concept of playing games board games was very very beautiful because it made you interact it made you assess it made you create a challenge for yourself it made you want to observe a strategy to be able to achieve the end that you wanted to achieve so the brain was constantly being stimulated with new ideas so playing board games is a very very nice idea for this kind of stimulation our neurons start to age while we are still in our 20s this process is slowed however by intellectual activity curiosity and a desire to learn dealing with new situations learning something new every day playing games and interacting with other people seem to be essential anti-aging strategies for the mind furthermore a more positive outlook in this regard will yield greater mental benefits okay so what has been said is and we read it in the magical child when we were reading also maximum neural growth takes place from the from the time you are born up to the age of 6 now the brain has a lot of neurons okay now if the neural pathways are not created all the neurons which are not integrated with a neural pathway are slaughtered they are removed from the system approximately at the age of 8 or uh, between 6 and 8 okay so the more stimulus a child has with various activities with various physical things various experimentations the more neural growth is there in the brain now once the neurons are gone they say th there is something called brain plasticity neural plasticity okay now new neurons may not grow but the neural dendrites and the synaptic connections which a neuron can make that can keep growing so the more stim the more you stimulate your brain with new things the more neural growth and pathways can develop in your brain this is what he is saying and the more the neural growth the better your anti aging properties in your life okay stress accused of killing longevity many people seem older than they are research into the causes of premature aging has shown that stress has a lot to do with it because the body wears down much faster during periods of crisis the american institute of stress investigated this degenerative process and concluded that most health problems are caused by stress so this is something that we've always been saying in awareness that every issue that you have is caused by stress ultimately if you boil it down there is a stress which is created and that is what causes the problem for you okay when we are looking at heart math when we are looking at brain wave patterns when we are looking at biofuel tuning for that matter every person who has more stress in their life they have more problems in their life if you can handle the situation in a more resilient manner automatically if you can handle the stress in a more resilient manner you can actually uh, create anti aging properties researchers at the heidelberg university hospital conducted a study in which they subjected a young doctor to a job interview which they made even more stressful by forcing him to solve complex math problems for 30 minutes afterwards they took a blood sample what they discovered was that his antibodies had reacted to stress the same way they react to pathogens activating the proteins that trigger an immune response the problem is that this response not only neutralizes harmful agents it also damages healthy cells leading them to age prematurely okay so we've seen when we are doing the heart math stuff whenever there is stress in the system and we can show you whether you're stressed out or not on screen of course we'll have to hook up to an equipment so it's not possible to do online but the fact is that if you're on the left side of the grid then chemicals like cortisol adrenaline are secreted in your system now if those chemicals are not used they will start creating harmful uh, uh they, they will start what we talked about in the blood that you know the porcupine things they will start creating pathogens etc in the blood and cause a degeneration in the system rather than being used as a booster in the 
system. The University of California conducted a similar study, taking data and samples from the 39 women who had high levels of stress due to the illness of one of their children and comparing them to samples from women with healthy children and low levels of stress. They found that stress promotes cellular aging by weakening cell structures known as telomeres, which affect cellular regeneration and how our cells age. As the study revealed, the greater the stress, the greater the degenerative effect on cells. So we talked about the telomeres also. These are basically the DNA has a tip and that tip determines how many times the DNA can split up. Okay. Now, whenever there is stress, there is degeneration in the telomeres. So the, the cells cannot regenerate as much. So you'll find someone who is stress-free. Okay. Now, stress can come in various ways. It can come emotionally. It can come mentally. It can come physically. It can come uh, psychically or uh, from the environment. So you have to see what kind of stresses you're de dealing with. And the person who's less stressed will automatically have better health in all aspects of living. How does stress work? These days, people live at a frantic pace and in a nearly constant state of competition. At this fever pitch, stress is a natural response to the information being received by the body as potentially dangerous or problematic. Theoretically, this is a useful reaction as it helps us survive in hostile surroundings. Over the course of our evolution, we have used this response to deal with difficult situations and to flee from predators. Okay, so whenever there is stress, adrenaline is secreted in the body system. Okay, now that is actually used as a booster chemical to give us strength to either fight or flight, the flight or fight response. Now, most of the time we are now... Nowadays, we don't have any predators. We are not getting attacked by animals, etc. So that fight and flight response is an age old thing, which is still running, but is not valid today. So the more stressed out you are, the more adrenal and the, uh, and the uh, cortisol in your system, that automatically will start eating into your system. Okay, so this is what he's saying over here. Over the course of evolution, we have used this response to deal with difficult situations to flee, flee from predators, but that is no longer valid. Now, having said that, our body system cannot distinguish between a real threat and an imagined threat. So if we imagine a threat also, the same chemicals are secreted. So watching our thoughts, what we are talking about in meditation is that watching our thoughts, what are we thinking? Are the thoughts that we are having depleting or uplifting start becoming very important when we are considering this aspect of what we are talking about. Okay, so the more in equanimity, the more in equilibrium that you can retain, the better you are in managing your stress. And uh, nowadays they have something called adrenal, uh, uh, adrenal fatigue also. So your adrenal glands are secreted, they are overworked so much by secreting adrenal all the time that you have fatigue in them. Now, when you need the adrenal, it is not available for you. Okay. So it's very important to protect our organs also to not unnecessarily make them overwork. The alarm that goes off in our head makes our neurons activate the pituitary gland, which produces hormones that release corticotropin which in turn circulates through the body via the sympathetic nervous system. So again, the, the sympathetic nervous system. So you have the ANS, we talked about it, the autonomous nervous system, which has got two parts. It has got the sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for the fight or flight response and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for the relaxation response. So whenever you are when an alarm goes off, whenever there is a threat, the sympathetic nervous system gets activated. The adrenal gland is then triggered to re release adrenaline and cortisol. 
Adrenaline raises our respiratory rate and pulse and prepares our muscles for action, getting the body ready to react to perceived danger, while cortisol increases the release of dopamine and blood glucose, which is what gets us charged up and allows us to face challenges. Okay. Here there is a table. So everyone got this, right? It allows us to face the challenge. But if the challenge is not real, then the chemical is still circulating in the body and it's not been used. Okay, so managing this becomes very, very important. So read the table, Shimangla. Cave dwellers were relaxed most of the time. Modern humans work most of the time and are alert to any and all threats. So a cave dweller, he used to get his food. And most of the time they were totally relaxed. But if you see our lives, we are constantly disturbed. We are constantly irritated. The phone is ringing. Someone is, uh, 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 the staff is coming to tell you something. You're thinking of something that you need to do in the office. So all the time we are totally stressed out. And this is what we observe when we put people on the EM wave and put them on the computer. Let me tell you, 90% of the people we find are stressed out. They may say that I'm very relaxed, I'm sitting comfortably, but when we put them on the screen, we see that they are stressed out. Cave dwellers felt stress only in very specific situations. Modern humans are online or waiting for notifications from their cell phones 24 hours a day. Yeah, so again, cave, stress. Cave dwellers, the threats were real. A predator could end their lives at any moment. Modern human, the brain associates the ping of a cell phone or an email notification with the threat of a predator. So now the email coming in or that ping of the cell phone acts, creates the same chemical reaction as if a predator is, go predator is going to attack you. Cave dwellers, high doses of cortisol and adrenaline at moments of danger kept the body healthy. Modern humans... Low doses of cortisol flow constantly through the body with implications for a range of health problems, including adrenal fatigue and chronic fatigue syndrome. So that feeling of tiredness all the time because adrenal is constantly getting secreted into the body system. Okay. And this is one of the causes of obesity also because the body wants to maintain a correct pH in the blood and whenever adrenal and Adrenaline and cortisol are uh, circulating in the body. The pH goes acidic. So the body makes you eat fat. It makes you eat carbohydrates to create fat so that it can take that thing out of the system. You will find that when you lose weight, the first you lose muscle weight. And then after that, the fat gets reduced because the body doesn't want to touch the fat. Okay. So one of the main causes of obesity is actually stress. These processes are in moderation beneficial. They help us overcome challenges in our daily lives. Nonetheless, the stress to which human beings are subjected today is clearly harmful. So we are constantly subjected to stress, electromagnetic stress. All the frequencies which are roaming around, you see the cell, cell towers, the Wi-Fi, uh, uh, the the uh, non-natural material that is used for construction, the steel creates a magnetic field. We are not even aware of it, but we are all subjected to a lot of harmful stressors in our body system. Okay. And we can see it when I'm, when I'm checking with the antenna, we've done it many times now. Whenever there is a slight stress in your body, the energy field will go out of sync. So if you are not able to maintain that inner resilience for yourself, you can understand that there's a, so much of stress that we are all being subjected to all the time. These processes are in moderation beneficial. They help us overcome challenges in our daily lives. Nonetheless, the stress to which human beings are subjected today is clearly harmful. Stress has a degenerative effect over time. A sustained state of emergency affects the neurons associated with memory, as well as inhibiting the release of certain hormones 
the absence of which can cause depression. Its secondary effects include irritability, insomnia, anxiety, and high blood pressure. Okay, so any kind of stress is constantly eating into you. It's like a dimag. Okay, it's like uh, uh, what do you call that? What's the English name for dimag? Someone can say anyway. Termites. Yeah, termites. So it's termites. like a termite. You know, it's eating into your system. and if you are if that sustained low level of stress is constantly going on in the body it makes you khokla from inside it makes you hollow from inside why because when the stress hormones are active the 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 action of like chemicals like d d e a h then d h e a oxytocin all these other chemicals endorphins other chemicals which are beneficial to our growth and regeneration of our body all that stops because both of them are created from the same thing we saw this even in the slide that we had from uh, uh, hands he said that the chemical adrenal and cortisol is created from the same chemical where dhea is created now if we do not have those chemicals one or the other will get created so if the stress hormones are getting created the other one is not getting created so generally what will happen it will cause secondary effects of irritability because we'll be highly stressed all the time we are always fluttering we are not in equino in an economic state okay insomnia today so many people have sleep disorders why is that because today we are watching tv a lot right now if you are watching tv we are constantly being stressed out before sleeping we are using the phone that light creates a problem it doesn't allow melatonin to be secreted in the system and that's why we are not sleeping well plus the movement in the screen is constantly creating us uh, making us go into a stress state of consciousness so again insomnia and all that will cause anxiety and when anxiety is there your blood pressure automatically starts to get affected as such though challenges are good for keeping mind and body active we should adjust our high stress lifestyles in order to avoid the premature aging of our bodies so taking that pause taking that relaxation going into a state of calm going into that silence becomes extremely important for our well being so and this is something that needs to be taught to youngsters unfortunately the youngsters don't do it because the youngsters copy the elders so if the elders are not doing it the youngsters will not do it please understand that if you want your child to meditate if you you want your child to become stress free then you have to become stress free first otherwise your child is not going to get stress free and of course it's going to help you because you you will be more healthy you'll be more much better off than other people are be mindful about reducing stress whether or not the threats we perceive are real stress is an easily identifiable condition that not only causes anxiety but is also highly psychosomatic affecting everything from our digestive system to our skin okay so now whenever we are in stress the sympathetic nervous system is involved and the sympathetic nervous system transfers all the energy into the extremities of the body okay the hands and the legs how are you going to respond in a fight or flight situation either you are going to run away or you are going to fight now let's say a tiger is attacking you are you at that time going to think of eating a pudding will someone want to eat a pudding when a tiger is attacking you no 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 <laughs> i'm sure no one will want to do that right so now if there is stress in the system whenever we want to run stress is there in the system it makes us move faster it makes us do things quickly okay now at that point in time the digestive system will stop working it is not going to work i keep repeating this experiment they did an experiment where they fed Uh, a barium a is food to a rat or uh, to a cat. cat okay to a cat and they were monitoring how the food is getting digested and they were seeing aram se the food is getting digested and then someone came and poked the cat what do you think happened will someone respond not someone who knows okay will someone respond what do you think happened 
Come on. Ran away? The cat ran away. No, no, no. The cat was still sitting there. But what happened? The digest. She couldn't digest the food. Exactly. The digestion stopped, and it stopped for two hours. Generally, when we are eating food, the food gets digested in about half an hour. Most of the food that we are eating. Okay. Now, just imagine if for two hours the food is sitting in that stomach of the cat and is not getting digested. What is going to happen? It's going to start putrefying. inside that stomach and then all sorts of other issues will start taking place so whenever we are in a stressed out environment the digestive system doesn't work the repair and maintenance system of the body stops working okay and as I, as we've been seeing whenever we are doing biofield tuning or when we are going into a deep meditative state people are getting itching on their skin what is that that means there's toxicity in the system which needs to get out so one of the ways it gets out is it gets out of the skin okay so the skin starts creating a problem so it affects everything from the digestive system to our skin i i don't know if i shared this with you all in one of the workshops there was this lady she came with pimples in her face and she's asking me will this get taken care of i said yes it will get taken care of let me tell you at the end of two days her body system relaxed so much that those pimples had disappeared there were no more pimples on her on the skin so it totally affected the skin when we go into a relaxed state of consciousness or relaxed state of mind this is why prevention is so important in avoiding the toll that stress takes on us and why many experts recommend practicing mindfulness so again mindfulness is what is the dis- difference between mindfulness and mindfulness can anyone say so mindfulness is having a lot of thoughts the monkey mind is constantly running and mindfulness is being aware of your thoughts being aware of what you are thinking both are mindful but how are you wording them totally changes the context the central premise of this stress reduction method is focusing on the self noticing our responses even if they are conditioned by habit in order to be fully conscious of them in this way we connect with the here and now and limit thoughts that tend to spiral out of control so again what is this becoming aware of our thoughts okay now once we start becoming aware of our thoughts we can ma- start to transcend and manage the thoughts and most of our thoughts if we start looking at them now if you start observing your thoughts throughout the day you'll find that most of the thoughts are either in the past or in the future now any thought that you are having of the past generally carries an a, a, a flavor of guilt in it and any thought of the future carries anxiety of the future in it okay what, but what is in your hand we did this in the power of now when we read the power of now in this group we found that when you are in the present that is when all the action is taking place so you are focused in the moment okay you are not in the past and you are not in the future when you go into the future or the past that is when you go out of control but if you are focused on the present then you are just doing the task that you are doing and your efficiency will improve everything will improve and things will not get out of control we have to learn to turn off the autopilot that's steering us in an endless loop we all know people who snack while talking on the phone or watching the news you ask them if the omelet they just ate had onion in it and they can't tell you okay now this is very very important alciba this is extremely important over here you are when you start getting into a habit of doing something it goes into autopilot so you are not even aware that you are doing it there will be so many chain smokers who will smoke a cigarette smoke a cigarette and they don't even have an idea whether they've smoked a cigarette or not okay now in the same way what are we doing nowadays if you see 90% of the young mothers they either put a phone in the hand of a child or they'll put them in front of a tv or a computer and they are feeding them the child doesn't even know what they are being fed they have no concept of tasting what they've been fed now when we are 
there are there are sensory perceptions which happen when you are when you are eating food now eating with the hands what does it do when we are eating with our hands there are sensory nerves in the fingertips and when we are touching the food what is the flavor of the food we are visually seeing the food we are smelling the food all this send signals to the body as to what is coming into the body so the body prepares itself to handle what is coming in and the chemicals required to digest the food are getting secreted but now if the child is not even aware of what food is eating just shoving it in then we feel that the nutrients are going into the system but if the system is not prepared to receive the nutrients the nutrients will get flushed out through the digestive system they won't it won't even get digested you get that so this becomes very very important we all know people who snack while talking on the phone or watching news if you ask them the omelet they had onions they cannot tell you so many a times a child will not even be able to tell you what it is what it is eating you shut the tv and it will stop eating so what are we training our children to do so this becomes extremely important over here you ask them if the omelet they just ate had onion in it and they can't tell you there's roberto alciba who abandoned his fast paced life to become a certified instructor of mindfulness after an illness threw him into a period of acute stress one way to reach a state of mindfulness is through meditation which helps filter the information that reaches us from the outside world it can also be achieved through breathing exercises yoga and body scans so again there are many ways to reach that state of consciousness the idea here when we are looking at brain wave patterns is to reduce the high beta frequencies which are there and come into the lower states or the lower frequencies when we have alpha beta theta i don't know how many of you all have attended those talks but then we need to come into the alpha state or into the theta state or into the delta state where the body starts to relax and the fight and flight response gets knocked out to be able to be attentive we have to have a combination of these frequencies which allow us to access deeper states of consciousness access our intuition create relaxation in the body and let yet be focused in the present moment to do the tasks that are at hand i just want to give an example about yes. uh, this mindfulness i don't know i uh, i watched the series mentalist yes uh, on amazon prime and uh, uh, the way he used to solve a murder is like he, what is more stressful than a murder watching a dead seeing a dead body and all but he himself was so relaxed that he would just go into the kitchen have tea observe things that nobody observed and access his intuition and that's the way he used to solve cases i mean it was really he used to if there was a murder on the beach he used to <laughs> just lie down on the beach and play with the kids and you know just uh, observe things that nobody would ever observe and exactly. that's the, he would exactly. solve cases. yeah so exactly that's what he's doing right he's stilling his mind he goes into that scene i've also watched that scenario he watches what is happening he is more aware of everything else than what other people are not aware of and again when you still your mind and i keep repeating this example if i throw a pebble in a ocean in in, uh, in storm nothing will happen but if i throw that same pebble in a still pond then everything will happen so what was he doing he was just stilling his mind and observing in that space what is happening what were the feelings and you can actually feel it in the body we were talking about it yesterday also i don't know which talk we were talking about it that our bodies are extremely sensitive our bodies knows everything we have to listen to the body okay now if there is a negative field somewhere and we go into that field our body will feel it so even when you are wanting to solve some issue when you wanting to solve some problem you can actually feel it in your bones that theory that you can feel it in your bones i had a gut feeling what is that it is your body which is feeling right the more you can tune into it the more more perception i mean more perceptive you will become automatically 
Uh, Minu, you have to, something to say? Yes, Minu. You can unmute. I guess not. It's Minu Singh Anya. Have you got something to say? No, Bhaiya. It's okay. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. Achieving mindfulness involves a gradual process of training, but with a bit of practice, we can learn to focus our mind completely, which reduces stress and helps us live longer. You know, even with mindfulness, it's a practice which you may have to do over decades. Now, we are blessed with technology. What Hemi Singh can take us like that, in one exercise, you can go into that state. And the more you achieve that state, the more in sync you will start becoming. You will start going into that stillness of mind so fast and so effectively it is not funny. So the more you do it, the more effective you will become in that. A little stress is good for you. While sustained, intense stress is a known enemy of longevity and both mental and physical health. Low levels of stress have been shown to be beneficial. After observing a group of test subjects for more than 20 years, Dr. Howard S. Friedman, a psychology professor in the at the University of California, Riverside, discovered that people who maintained a low level of stress, who faced challenges and put their heart and soul into their work in order to succeed, live longer than those who chose a more relaxed lifestyle and retired earlier. So what does this mean? That you're constantly challenging yourself. It doesn't mean just have a low level of stress all the time where adrenal keeps getting secreted. That's not the stress he's talking about. What he's talking about here is that you constantly create challenges for yourself. You're constantly raising the bar for yourself. If I can do 10 push-ups, I raise the bar and now I want to do 12 push-ups. Then I raise the bar and I want to do 15 push-ups. So like that, going from the known to the unknown, which is what we, we read about in The Magical Child, the more you push yourself, the more distance you go, the more intuitive you become, the more intelligent you become, and the better you do work. Plus over here he says one thing, they put their heart and soul into their work in order to succeed. Now if you come back to, to the four agreements, what was, what was one of the tenets? Do your best. If you are not doing your best, that means your heart and your mind is not equally involved in what you are doing. So the satisfaction levels will not be there. Now you equate it with the Ikigai, you will find that, is it your passion? If your, your heart and soul is not in it, then it is not your Ikigai. So you are just doing it for the heck of doing it. And naturally that is not going to be beneficial and you are not going to be efficient in whatever you are doing. And he says one more thing, those who do not challenge themselves, they ultimately don't have long life because their brain starts to dull, their physical body will start to dull. So you need to keep stimulating yourself to do something new. From this, he concluded that a small dose of stress is a positive thing, as those who live with low levels of stress tend to develop healthier habits, smoke less and drink less alcohol. So now, when do you drink alcohol? When you're feeling bored maybe? Or you're highly stressed out, okay? You want to cut yourself off from that particular stress. But a low level of stress is constantly stimulating you. So you're going to constantly be uh, attentive to find solutions. You're constantly being that, okay, how can I do this? How can I do this better? How can this work better? So you're constantly focused on that, okay? You're not getting into the other habits which want to take you out of a dreadful stress. Given this, it is not surprising that many of the super centenarians, people who live to be 110 or more, whom we meet in this book, talk about having lived intense lives and working well into old age. So they love what they do. They care about what they do. So they live with passion. They live with intensity. They, they are into what they are doing. Okay. 
that's what makes them alive and that's what makes them live so retirement actually is in many ways is not a good thing unless you actually enjoy it okay most people do not enjoy the retired life they think that they will enjoy it but they are not stimulated enough so unless you have hobbies like reading or doing something something else which keeps you occupied after you retire it actually creates a problem the joint family system in this was really beautiful because after a person retired you started helping out in looking after the kids telling them stories making them eat their food taking them for walks playing games with them that became very very stimulating for the aged people also okay now there's a concept there was uh, some article in the uh, internet that they have a they have a old age home where children from kindergarten come to study and the old people look after them and make them study so they act like the guardians of the youngsters now and that experiment has been working very well it's very very similar to our joint family system a lot of sitting will age you in the western world in particular the rise in sedentary behavior has led to numerous diseases such as hypertension and obesity which in turn affect longevity spending too much time seated at work or at home not only reduces muscular and respiratory fitness but also increases appetite and curbs the desire to participate in activities so you know in in the monroe institute what they started doing was they they stopped sitting in the chairs many of them and they actually had their computers in a high table and they used to stand and do their work so they were moving around constantly and not sitting so that's one way in which you could actually deal with it being sedentary can lead to hypertension imbalanced eating cardiovascular disease osteoporosis and even certain kinds of cancer recent studies have shown a connection between a lack of physical activity and the progressive distortion of telomeres in the immune system which ages those cells and in turn the organism as a whole so again you have to be active you have to keep moving okay now it doesn't mean you have to do cardio exercises even just a light stroll a light walk just getting up from your chair once in a while and taking a walk around that becomes very very uh, very very invigorating there is something called a figure 8 in uh, many offices they do it that you have to get up from your table every few hours or every hour for 5 minutes take a walk around the office and come back and sit in your chair this is a problem at all stages not only among adults sedentary children suffer from high rates of obesity and all its associated health issues and risks which is why it's so important to develop a healthy and active lifestyle at an early age so again playing outdoors for kids i i remember when we were growing up we used to be on the street most of the time riding bicycles running around playing uh, different uh, things etc now of course in the city life it's not possible because there's so many cars going around all the time okay but how many kids actually get out to play i remember we used to play all games we used to play cricket football hockey volleyball basketball today how many kids are exposed to these games at a physical level yes video games they are, they may be exposed but at a physical level how many games are they exposed to so getting exposed to games becomes very very important it's easy to be less sedentary it just takes a bit of effort and a few changes to your routine we can access a more active lifestyle that makes us feel better inside and out we just have to add a few ingredients to our everyday habits walk to work or just go on for a walk for at least 20 minutes each day use your feet instead of an elevator or escalator this is good for your posture your muscles and your respiratory system among other things participate in social or leisure activities so that you don't spend too much time in front of the television replace your junk food with fruit and you'll have less of an urge to snack and more nutrients in your system get the right amount of sleep 7 to 9 hours is good but any more than that makes us lethargic 
play with children or pets or join a sports team this not only strengthens the body but also stimulates the mind and boosts self esteem be conscious of your daily routine in order to detect harmful habits and replace them with more positive ones by making these small changes we can begin to renew our bodies and minds and increase our life expectancy so this is very simple go for a walk at least 20 minutes a day use use the elevator or staircase participate in various activities like we are participating also okay so we are stimulating our mind we are talking about stuff we are actually thinking about stuff which is positive so it be conscious of your daily routine okay detect harmful uh, habits and replace them play with children play with pets okay that's why abroad because children are not living with parents the pet culture is very much there everyone is looking after their pet and let me tell you looking after pet pet is a task it is not so simple as we think ki bas pet aa gaya and we look after it okay cats are much much easier but if you have dogs you really have to pay attention to them they will make you walk every day in the morning and the evening okay then get the right amount of sleep so sleep is something which we all discount and sleep is extremely important your quality of sleep becomes very very important i think we've reached uh, 3:15 we can continue tomorrow any anyone wants to say anything anyone anything any comments niket ji yes ganesh ji hello yeah go ahead niket ji yeah am i audible yeah you are audible um, after my retirement uh, after my retirement yes um i got into the habit of uh, doing things which i could not do earlier mm. like um, i was interested so gardening then looking after the uh, pets in the house yeah then uh, taking a walk which very much i wanted mm. but I could not do mm. so either going for a walk in the morning or cycling around in the area yeah and uh, also if there is raining and not good weather then doing exercises in the house itself yeah wonderful so uh, keeping myself engaged uh, doing different and new things yeah. absolutely that's what that's exactly the so you are healthy right you are active yeah. your mind is sharp yeah that's exactly what the book is saying yes okay anyone yeah. else would like to share something Yeah, so I have Gita here. Yeah, Gita. Yeah, I want to ask mindfulness. You said two types of mindfulness. So, yeah. is there any spelling difference between no, both no, of you? I think just a hyphen. Okay. It's so, mindfulness and mindfulness. So, mindfulness is your mind is full, okay, with all the kachra and all the thoughts, and mindfulness. is being aware of your thoughts okay being aware being conscious of what is happening ayya please can you repeat what is the mind full and mind 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 hyphen fullness okay mm. okay that's mind is full okay mind and mindfulness hyphen. is being mindful of okay. what is happening so being right. aware got thank you i hope i got it right i don't know <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Spelling is not one of my strengths. <laughs> yeah, mind is really bad. Let me tell you. I think one one is mindful is f u l and the other one should be f u double l. Okay. Anyway. Where mm -hmm. it is full full is f u double l and the mindfulness which comes in meditation is f u l. Okay. Uh, that means mindfulness. Are we talking about the second one? No, uh, Shri Mangala. <laughs> Understand the concept. Forget yeah, about yeah. spelling. Yeah, yeah. Look up the dictionary. <laughs> no, no, I've I've. Okay, concept is clear. Concept is clear. Only how to note it. I got confused. Yeah. F U double L is the one which is your mind is full of things. Yeah. And F U L N E S S is uh, the one which is talking about the uh, the oh. mindfulness of meditation or whatever. Meditation, conscious. Okay. Right. Detail. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, I Hello, just want to say, to see, uh, one second, miss... Mawaji, please raise your hand. Yes, Sishitan. Yeah, so uh, this medical literature tells us that, you know, you have to sleep for hours a day, okay? What I found is uh, in this uh, lockdown period when I was doing hemi-sync and I do a little bit of other meditation, my sleep quota has really come down to five hours and I'm yeah. as fresh as ever. So, correct. you know, there is this uh, constant thing that whether it's the correct thing, it's not the correct thing. So no, 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 no. Again, okay. you have to understand that today we need a minimum of two hours of delta sleep every day. And one cycle of sleep is about one and a half hours in which you get approximately 20 minutes of delta sleep in that one cycle. So right. when, you have, when you sleep for nine hours, you get approximately two hours of delta sleep. Right. Okay. Yes. Now what we have found across the board that anyone who has attended the, the, um, the Monroe Hemisync programs, their requirement of sleep drops because their quality of sleep increases. Okay. You are spending more time yeah. in delta sleep, which allows okay. you to be fresh as ever with less amount of sleep. Okay, so that's perfectly natural, right? Yeah, After yeah, doing it, is, this. it is across the board we have found it. That people who attend the workshops, their their sleep requirement goes down. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, Maria Dos. I'm sorry, I can't I'm Maria Doss, can you unmute? I, I don't know where you are. Okay, Mamaji, please go ahead. Yeah, I was just trying to ask Sri Mangla, what yeah. about M I N D F W -O L? No. <laughs> Any double S? Mindful. Sri Mangla se poochna chata tha. Ek baat hai, chaliye. <laughs> Fool ko fool bana I don't know whether it's a fool or a fool. <laughs> okay. So Maria Dos, you have a question? Yeah, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you have we see uh, your video so we about, can see? about mindfulness? I've been uh, following a uh, pitch net hand. Okay. And uh, about uh, the focus is on the present, on on the now. The Correct. power of now, yeah. like uh, Eckhart Tolle's uh, book uh, mentions, yeah. Yeah. and it is brought out by exercise on breathing, awareness, the moment you breathe, you breathe in, and you know that you are breathing in, you breathe yeah. out, and you know that you are breathing out. Yeah. That brings in uh, the focus on the present moment. Yeah. And that has been very powerful exercise. I've been practicing quite some time. It's yeah. fantastic. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, thank you for yeah, your yeah. presentation. Yeah. So focusing on, on any one thing, most meditation will tell you to focus ah. on one thing because after mm. some time the mind says that this is no longer important. Mm. So it takes you into a state yes, of yes. stillness. So whether you focus yes. on your breath, some meditations will tell you focus on a candle, right? Now you're focusing on the ah. flame. You're just focusing on the flame. Now, suppose you're focusing on a smell also. It will shift you. Uh -huh. so any Correct. one Mind thing you shift. focus on, it will start shifting you. The breath is one of the easiest things to focus on. Because that is something that you are doing constantly. We are not even aware that we are breathing. So the idea Correct. of breathing with awareness automatically also shifts you. That is the first step in the heart math process also. That focusing your mm -hmm. attention in your breathing and deepening your breathing. So that you know you go mm -hmm. into an altered state. So that is another way when we are looking at the heart math process to take you into deep mm. intuitive and meditative states through the process of breathing and the heart. You can reach there, there also. What we've also mm. found is that as soon as we start going into deeper meditative states using Hemi Singh, your breathing slows mm. down. Okay. And in fact, at times uh -huh. you find that you're hardly breathing. You're just there. You're just present in that present moment. So there are various okay. ways of approaching the same thing. Definitely, there are various ways. Body awareness comes uh, next, I think. What? Yeah. yeah so awareness of the body from the toe till the head. Absolutely. So again, when we are doing the hemi sing, I don't know if you've attended the meditations. The first thing is to put you into a relaxed state. So you're paying attention to each area of your body and slowly relaxing it and going yes. into a synchronized state of consciousness. 
I think all meditative practices are doing the same thing ultimately. Mm. It's all uh, coming to the same point. But thank, thank you so you. much for sharing that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anything? Otherwise, we will uh, break and we'll meet at three forty-five for the meditation. <clears throat> Today we don't have the nine fifteen, so we will. Uh, this will be the last. Uh, the meditation will be the last session today. There's some comments. I don't know. Okay. Ram Ram. Okay, Ram Ram, everyone. See you all. Ram Ram. All thank you. Meditation at three forty-five. Ram Ram, Nikhil, thank you. Ram Ram, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Bhaiya. Thank you.